thank you all for coming. From MacArthur Park, Los Angeles, somewhere near downtown LA, on a Monday night, Harmontown is now in session. Let's bring out the Game Master, Spencer Crittenden. And your mayor, Dan Harmon. Oh no, coming in hot. What the hell is going on? Nothing. This is my natural posture. I'm not sucking anything in. <laughs> Uh, I just feel, I felt like I, I felt like I had a little bit of a cheeseburger slide in New York. Oh, sorry. Oh, hip hop. Oh, you gotta <laughs> stop eating like a piece of shit if you wanna be beating your weight into submission. I fucked your mama with my nocturnal emissions. Autopilot, they call it. I fucked her without even trying it. I'm bored with your mama sexually. Oh, damn. Wow, it took, it took over 300 episodes for yeah. you to finally... <laughs> yeah. Finally tire of that. I mean... The, Honeymoon's I mean, over. You, you, and, you and their mama had a pretty good run, I gotta say. It's, that's... It was the longest relationship with anything, or, or any job, or automobile. Like, yeah. I've never committed to anything longer than I have your mama. Right. I mean, I wonder, I wonder how many times you fucked the mama's to the north and to the south. I don't know. Three or, I mean, four. Three or four. It seems like the kind of thing, I mean, and I wouldn't want to cause busy work for this person, but it seems, <laughs> but I, don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to trigger any kind of disorder that needs to not be triggered uh, for someone to be happy, but uh, it seems like the kind of thing that someone on the internet would just go through and they would give us an accurate count on how many times the phrase, fuck your mama, has been said. <laughs> What do you think it would be? Take a jelly bean Wait, jar just, count. Like just saying, fuck, I yeah. fucked your mama? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Uh, I would say 1,700 times. It might be more than that. That might be a, like, a, like a Price is Right, Bitter's Row, low ball. You're, you're going to say 1,701 and fucking win and get up there and... Uh, we won't go prices, right? We'll, okay. we'll, go, we'll go distance from absolute. Right. I'm guessing 1,700. I'm going to say 1,500. Does any, any, anybody here have the aptitude for that sort of thing that they think they know? A, 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 the aptitude for guessing? Or no, no, no. <laughs> Somebody. I, I, autism. Autism. Does anyone, does anyone here have autism? <laughs> Uh, I mean, does anybody have to think, think that they would think it's much higher or much lower number? It's got to be less than 300. It's huh? got to be less than 300? Yeah. You really think an episode's gone by without... So let's say if you've wrapped half the episodes, mm -hmm. and in three-quarter of those you've mentioned it at all, then that's what? Like 40% of the episodes. So you would have to fuck them to the north and to the south three times per wrap. No, Dan is saying... No, no, just, we're talking about just fuck your mom is not north and south. Oh, I thought you... Okay, so I thought this was about fucking them both in the north and the south. <laughs> Look, no, I, 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 want, I want all Easily these numbers. Easily 2,000. I, I want to get all these numbers. Huh? No, no, this is different. No, but that, like, but Dan, that's, that's why I didn't want to pollute this with the with the. Uh, but these are the, the right questions. I just wanted to start with a baseline of how. Because yeah, because you'll 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 fuck like seven mamas in one rap. Right. right. Done three hundred sub. If I episode. rap for two minutes, that's gonna like be so. At least I was, twenty. I, my guess is an average of five times per the number of episodes, just because some episodes. Okay. Sure, maybe I don't rap at all. Right. Maybe I that's don't. fair. And then, but then it's like it is my crutch, you know. Yeah. Like the only time I've I've done away with it. Okay. So so you would be the, the that, Mike that, Eagle episode, and that I probably did it 17 times. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm gonna say actually, you know what? I think 1500 is way too low. I think you're right. I'm uh, going 1700. I'm gonna go 1900. Okay. Yeah. I want to go. Okay. So we'll just, you know who knows who can count that. Maybe somebody can. You know these days they have uh, the last time I checked. They they had Avid plugins. This was still when I was working at Community. Like like I think like Yahoo season, like. 
Avid had this plugin that uh, I can't remember what it was called, but it's you could you can type in a word like butterfly, and it would go through all of the footage in the bins and like bring up clips marked, and it would be like Donald Glover saying butterfly, Chevy Chase saying butterfly. Like like you type in the word, and it would it would it would voice recognize without having to do it in real time. It would just go th scrub through all of the data instantly and bring up. Uh, a list sorted by relevance or whatever, like close, and, and, and at the top of the list, it was just like, holy shit, they, this is everyone saying butterfly. And then, the, and then there would be like a steep drop down to people saying, you know, give me a piece of peanut butter pie or something. Um, <laughs> but and it was amazing, which is also useful if you were trying, if you were gonna edit like a fucking like mix or something, and you'd, now you'd have a thing that rhymes with butterfly. <laughs> Peanut butter pie. I thought that I thought that was just incredible. Like, I, it, like, like editing is, you know, obviously we don't wear little white gloves and like, do, you know, splice tape anymore. But, but beyond that leap to the digital, there really hasn't been, you know, there's been so few things that actually make it a faster thing to edit, which has always been this sort of Promethean uh, 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 hybrid of, of of engineering and artistry in, uh, editing, uh, and, and 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 the idea that a, that an AI could just be like, you know, no, no, I'll pull up all those takes where they got their line right or whatever, as which used to be the domain of man, yeah, <laughs> and that that is a an intentionally exclusive statement. Only male editors can. Uh, <laughs> Uh, speaking of, uh, of progress, uh, 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 we, we, uh, 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 Stan Lee has progressed off of the, off of the mortal realm, his mission accomplished, that, was he 94 years old? 95. 95. 95. Yeah. What a life. Did Lee, you meet him? Have you, did you? I met him, but, you know, it was like, it was like, I met him in a line. Right, a of, Comic Con or something? Yeah. You weren't there for that? No. Okay. Yeah, that was a Rick and Morty thing. Me and Justin got, got we're, we went to Kamikaze, Stan Lee's Kamikaze, and got to, he signed a thing, and it wasn't really like come party with Stan Lee. Right. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know. Were you a fan of the DC stuff? or? I don't really care about that stuff, like, like at all. Anyway, anymore, I'm tired. But, uh, <laughs> but, it, but it's, but it's objectively, you know, n notable that 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 in like, I mean, Stan Lee was the obviously. I mean, wow, what a like. It's, it's it's just sort of a uh, interesting to, like, not only is it a, a not only is it a, like, oh, we have him to thank for a bunch of shit that we've been talking about for the last 25 years alone. Um, uh, but the idea of living a life so complete that in your way past your 80th year, which if I make it past 80, I'm going to be like, I, I just imagine myself, the, all I'll be doing is it will be all pharmaceutical based and <laughs> like paperwork and like getting sued or whatever you do past 80, you know, just fighting for just for the right to just sort of squat on terra firma. Uh, <laughs> But uh, but in his in his I mean he's, he got to he got to watch the the, the 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 thing that in your biopic usually just has to happen in that like one paragraph after the person that the biopic's about dies you know Charlie Chaplin goes away and then the paragraph says and he you know now today he's taught in universities and blah blah blah, blah, blah you know and you always have that feeling of oh that's a little sad I wish Picasso or so and so could have could have been there for that part. It was kind of neat. He he was he he got to, pretty sure he left like, <laughs> like well at after the credits of his biopic. He's probably like, you know what? If I stick around for ten more minutes, like something awful is gonna happen. <laughs> I'm I'm either, like he really he really yeah. really nailed that you don't, landing. You, you don't think he was murdered? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a little. There was right at the end there. There wasn't there a little a weird fracas uh, kind of uh, something about him suing his manager or somebody. So, so there was. Some kind of odd, His nurse? I don't know. Or nurse or something. I what? hope I hope I hope I hope it was a legitimate Wait, so uh, he was suing his nurse and then he just conveniently dies? Well I t Uh oh. I don't even I mean Reported here first. <laughs> Harmontown exclusive scoop. I heard that he didn't like really get do any of the comics or Fantastic Four or like any of the comics he got known to for until he was like forty years old. So like 
Like, it's not just like, oh, well, there you go. There's he was like an intrepid a... young cartoon. He was like a 40-year-old man, and then his life started. Yeah, I would, I would, that's good. I'm glad you, glad you pointed that out. That's Because it's like, what can we learn from people? Other Because it's like, otherwise, the, the message becomes as bland as like, oh, I hope I get to do stuff. That, that must have been nice for him. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, a lot of people uh, email me, or uh, hopefully a lot of people don't have my email, but... Uh, uh, you know, like Tumblr messages and Most whatever. People that slide into my DMs or or what? You know, like people. There's a there's a theme among the things that people ask me uh, called uh, uh, "Am I too old to try to start doing what you're doing?" If I've been uh, up until now a plumber or an exterminator or a, a bicycle thief, um, <laughs> and. Uh, of course, we know that fashionably you're you're supposed to say absolutely not. You're never too old. But I actually believe that uh, you, you that 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 you, no, you have to start when you're 20. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean I truly believe it's so important to keep that in mind. And and and, and, the, and it's such a great example because he was basically it's it's like hey guess what, the TV writing business got sued for it, and I don't know if they even cleaned up their act. There's ageism. Like, in existing industries, these existing channels, let the kids ask, how do I do it? How did they do it yesterday? But the, the, the blessing and curse of maybe feeling like you're too long in the tooth to strike out and do something is that you almost got no choice but to, you know, carve out your own niche. Like, but absolutely, I mean, it's just like he's not known for that. It's not like it's not like his eulogy right. on ABC News today is going to be uh, known as the late starter, the late Stanley uh, Brown. But yeah, I mean, it, it's a, it probably was a huge factor in his life that he yeah. had to think about all the time from 32 to 40. You know, like, what the fuck am I doing? How many times do you think he? Maybe thought, uh, wh why am I drawing uh, sequential pictures of a guy climbing a wall? This is never. I got I gotta stop this. This is not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> Other than the wall. <laughs> Do we have Shrabs then? Or no, it's his no, birthday. It's his, his birthday. birthday. Why would he come here? Happy birthday, Shrab. Happy birthday, Shrab. <laughs> oh yeah. He's still not here, though. Uh, yeah, I know. I love, I love the Rob Shop. I'm glad he's not here on his birthday. That would be real, incredibly depressing. You also yeah. invited him. I, I did, but I was, I'm, glad he, that glad. I'm glad he did not heed that call. <laughs> well, I'm he invited him on, 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 on the chance that the, that the truth would be more <laughs> depressing. So, like, he's, he's happy to find out that he had something better to do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do they say? Uh, 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 pray, for, pray for sunshine, prepare for rain? Something I think. like that. I don't know. I think I coined it. <laughs> uh, How was your New York experience? I know like, people, there's a story that happened in New York that it's going to drop on the next episode after this one that we talked oh, about. Oh, really? Yeah. We're, it's going to come out like during the, the week we're off around Thanksgiving. Because oh. uh, things went a little hairy on the way to, <laughs> to New York City. <laughs> and I not with the recording. Yeah. Like the recording, I, I talked about, we, we talked about nothing but, because I, I said uh, in New York, I said, look, we're either going to, if, if we talk, if we start talking about the, our trip to New York, we're, that'll be the entire 90 minute show. Yeah, let's just say, and it was. I became Joey Ramone and, and Cody became Sid and Nancy. <laughs> Joey Ramone we, was famously known for falling asleep <laughs> outside. We were overserved is, yeah. the, is the headline. <laughs> you got to check out the episode. It'll be a really good one. Uh, we know boy. you guys are famous for I'm listening to the so podcast. I'm still so ashamed of myself. It was the worst. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. But, and I, I think I was real drunk when I said it, but I babbled a little bit at the end because I didn't want it to just be a maypole dance around uh, people g getting drunk and having embarrassing things happen to them. I want, you know, I want, I, 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 I don't want to repeat myself of the, the, for that episode, but I just, but this is going to be a recurring theme now after going through a year of like sorting through a bunch of shit. Like my new thing is like, got to be vulnerable, got to be honest, got to be transparent, got to, got to just even even though there is this increasing pressure from a reaction chamber, uh, this 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 world that we're voluntarily or not uh, transitioning into or becoming these digital creatures and we can't have that digital world be a place of shame that can't rule the day. Did you guys see this, uh, t the, the Trumpy Bear ad thing? Yeah, a, Trumpy so a, Bear. 
So no then. There was this ad aired on Fox News for Trumpy Bear. Seemed like it was a joke. It, it was like it could have been an onion-produced commercial it for had, Trumpy it the, Bear. It had the unmistakable tone, a little bit of a sketch. Even the act, like even the the, the on-screen actors that were like using it just seemed like they were doing it as a joke. It has a it has a flag hair blanket you, inside of it, it so you, it, hair you that open you can it. comb and you and then, and then you can pull out an American flag blanket out of its tummy and curl up with Trumpy Bear. And it and, comes with a certificate. And there's a dude on a motorcycle, like a, like a big like Harley's Angel. Harley's it, Angel. What yeah, the fuck it, is that? He's a like, Hell's Angel Harley guy driving like, around with a teddy bear talking about, yeah, I've got my Trumpy Bear. Trumpy yeah. Bear's my bro or something. Yeah, and it, it, it seems like a joke. Well, have we verified that it's for real? No, we, we've just mused idly about it. The, the reason I bring it up is because, is because I looked at it and I was like, my sincere optimistic hope here is that is that this is uh, a Nathan, graph. Nathan Fielder or John Oliver? Like that we're gonna we're gonna find out a couple months from now. But who um, knows? Or someone or someone doing that because it, if if it is, that's that's ingenious because. And th and then that m kind of made me realize how much we need that, whether this is that or not. Like that has been my continued frustration that that uh, it, to the extent that you view our country as being in any kind of like battle between two sides, you, it's your choice if you don't want to see it that way. I understand that you're a Harmon town audience, and I've been that guy for more longer than I've been this pick a side guy. Um, wouldn't force anything on you, um, but uh, if you do perceive this kind of like. Uh, two-sided thing, it's, I, I, the, the next thing you might perceive to your frustration is that wh when, did, when did we, if we are the left, when did we, when did we become the, the ones that aren't funny? Um, <laughs> like, 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 because that's how we started for sure. Lo like there's nothing f funny or smart about, about the views that are that are that are held by the, that other side. Therefore, what a crime it is that they're the trolls, that they're the they're the ones doing the bits and the practical jokes and the stunts. And it's like, they've it's like come we, we gotta we gotta get that that scepter back where we're, we should we should be having orgies in the street and making jokes that they don't understand and high-fiving each other for being misunderstood and ununderstandable. And, and we should be, be able to stand side by side with, with, with people that we don't even get, but we know that we want them to have a right to not be gotten. And, uh, and, and to the point where the only way to be on that other side is to be either silent and ashamed or loud and embarrassing to those other people that are silent. And, and that's, that's, that's where you want your, your foes. Otherwise, you're just awash in this thing that then, then our, our beautiful, you know, kind of somewhere caught in the middle people uh, they get they get that luxury of going like I don't see any difference between you guys and that's when we lose big time you lose that big giant middle of people that are like I'm tired of this shit I'm tired of listening to mom and dad bitch at each other I don't I don't I, I can't see any difference between you. you you're both just so ashamed of yourselves and afraid of each other and trying to convince somebody of something that's not true and you're you're both lying and you're both politicking and it's like our great revolutions and our great victories against fascism have always come down to how can you fight organic freedom? How can you fight sexuality? How can you fight poetry? How can you fight humor? How can you fight music? You, there's nothing to get your hands around. There's no throat there. But Yeah, it's a culture war. Mm -hmm. we, got, we got those socialist gritty memes now, though. That's like the first positive step we've taken ever. But I think it would be amazing and relatively hard. It wouldn't be dirty combat to be like, hey, here's a, this, this, this Trumpy bear and make, make them all buy a thing, then reveal to them three months later that all of that money went to uh, black scholarships or abortions or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 then on and then they have to like take it down from the gun rack in their bar and either burn it but it's got an American flag in it. Isn't there a, like, a, like a little caveat in the thing that says... There's a, little, there's a disclaimer people were pointing out. I think there's another website or whatever, but it's, it's a real thing. But uh, the question is, is it a real thing that's kind of a cynically 
jovial, right thing, which wouldn't be the first time. I mean, they've gotten... Every, oh, yeah, everyone's gotten so arch, too. you can tell who's kidding They anymore. sell mugs and shit. But uh, but it's like it's either that or it's a, but it, but it does say there's like this there's like this very specific caveat about you can't return this damaged, and and it, and, it, and it's sort of like I don't know. Oh sh- see that's it's got to be it's got to be a, a graft, a put on, a Trojan bear. <laughs> <laughs> this is no. If you watch the ad, truly the the actors do seem like they're kind of like trying to be like almost jokey. Yeah. Not not. I don't know. It's really rides the line. They're right. having a good time, but if it, let's say it's let's say it's real, they're gonna sell a lot of those Trumpy bears. They're certain. Yeah. Well, you don't let's put say an it's ad fake. on the television let's say if you're fake. They could it. still. They, they'd be stupid to not sell a million Trumpy bears and use that money. No, they're for... definitely selling something. You can't just put on a TV. It costs a lot of money, Jeff. Yeah. How much? No, they have to make them. How much does a Trumpy bear go for, Spencer? Do you know? Two two payments of nineteen ninety five. <laughs> two payments. <laughs> two payments. <laughs> Wow. And like a build a bear is what, like thirty bucks, twenty bucks? Okay. I don't know. Uh, Levy pointed out that we have yet to talk about Red Dead Redemption Two. Yeah, so. no shit, Levy. <laughs> it brought to mind this this text message exchange that I just had with Cody today. Now, before I go into this, I really want you to understand that I have I, I I'm one of the people who thinks this is a masterpiece of a video game. So Whoa. I know I know how I know how flamed up we get about our video game culture like it makes makes uh, that was a good movie that was a bad movie look like a fucking uh, <laughs> civil war reenactment compared to vietnam like 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 the way that people are like you're wrong it's a bad game um so i feel like the need to disclaim this and go i'm a fan of the game because i was just i, just, I was just doing a bit for myself with because cody sent me a, a tweet a picture of a tweet from a guy that's that tweeted Gave up on Red Dead Redemption 2 because I couldn't figure out which horse was mine. Fuck this game. (laughs) So I texted Cody back. All he has to do is whistle and his horse would walk up to him. Fuck that guy. Uh, Yeah, I just learned you can like put, you can tie someone up and put them on the back of their own horse and then, or no, put them on the back of your horse, then get on their horse and ride their horse and whistle for your horse to follow behind you. And then you can carry a deer on the back of your horse too. Damn. Everyone wins, <laughs> except for the person tied up. Wait, you, is, is there a button that says whistle? Or how, how oh, yeah, there's yeah. a button. It's the up you know, button. You know the button that says whistle, don't you? It's just you the just button put that your... puts your lips together and the button that blows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was, a nice, yeah. that was a nice to have and a, have not reference. Though. A reference was... so old that we, we, we get it, because... <laughs> Because if it survived this, these many st- sandstorms, we all... No, it's not like... Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so the, so the, the, how many buttons we got in this thing if, you, if there's a whistle button? On the controller? A, you know, there's a controller. There's like 90 fucking buttons. So Cody made the mistake of typing ha-ha, and oh. so now I got a nickel in me. And, and I... <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> wow, what a provocative asshole she is. No, no, that's So I not. texted, the reason he should give up is because it takes five attempts to stand in front of a biscuit the way that lets you pick it up. Yeah. Uh, and she texted, ha, okay, I go back to sleep. Come cuddle soon. Harvey's saving your spot for you, which is her saying, you know, enough. So I kind of like, I was like, it'd be funny if I kept going. Uh, <laughs> so- I, solid I said, move. he should give up because the missions require you to slaughter entire towns, but if you accidentally press the fart button while you're tipping your hat, your honor goes down and ammunition costs more. <laughs> he should give up because if, if you kill a man that tries to kill you and another man sees you do it, you have to run and make the third man pinky swear not to share his experience with his family <laughs> over dinner because if you just kill him, the price of bacon goes up, and if you just ignore him, he instantly tells the world you're a murderer, and that means you have to go to the post office. <laughs> It's true. Yeah. These sound like bits. Yeah. It's oh, true. I, just... I don't know if you can buy bacon in the game. That's the only thing that's not right. true. About I tried that. to pick up a dead person's hat and I put it on and it was like, this hat will not be saved. This is not your default hat. And I was like, <laughs> you told me to pick up the hat. <laughs> There's almost only one reason he shouldn't give up on Red Dead Redemption 2, and that reason is because you can't find your horse. You can only find your horse That's in that game. Thing it's to a do. mind-reading homing horse that can teleport to the bottom of cliffs. <laughs> Here are some things that are harder to find than your horse in Red Dead Redemption 2. Your clothes. 
your friends, your objectives, a satchel with room for more than nine things, a way to survive without carrying nine pieces of food, a bowl of stew, your own left leg while taking a bath, the guy that keeps moaning in the hotel in the town of Valentine, a way to fuck any of the 20 sex workers in the saloon that compulsively ask you if you want some company every time you walk by them, interactions with random men that don't force you to choose between beating the fuck out of them or walking away while they call you a pussy, treasure maps that function more like maps than Pictionary with an autistic child, a way to win a gunfight with more than two men that doesn't involve running away and sneaking back seven times, any recourse whatsoever to role-playing as anything other than a sad, drunk, confused, psychotic, wobbling through mud, slurring at everyone, or hiding in the wilderness, mutilating animals in the pathetic hope that if you cut enough skin off enough deer, you might be able to pick up enough motor function to walk from one end of a room to the other without accidentally dying or killing. <laughs> well, now I want to go home and play some more because I just remembered how awesome this game is. <laughs> it's good. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, come home now, please. <laughs> I gotta work more, sorry. I did, I had to work more. Damn. D did you? Well, not as hard as I did on that. <laughs> I had this, the, what, like, one of the last things I did, because the game, like, kind of puts these, like, random events in front of you, and so it's this, these two lawmen are, are pulling a wagon with a, with a prisoner, and just between you and me, the prisoner is like an older black woman. And she's saying, like, I didn't do it. I didn't do anything. I'm innocent. And so I'm like, well, the game is telling me I got to save this lady. And so I sneak up on him, and I shoot them both in the head. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to hide the bodies because, you know, I don't want to go get in, get in trouble. And so then another cop comes, and I shoot him. And then I'm like, well, I'm just going to let this lady out and run away. And then, so then three more cops come, and I get a big firefight, and I kill, like, four horses on accident. It's a whole night. Nightmare. I have like a $40 bounty on my head and then I, I finally let the old lady out and she's like, thank you so much. By the way, Sonny, there's this old turnip farm down south that you can rob. And I was like, what the fuck? There's all these, all these yeah, everyone, all these missions are just like, here's a police. whole robbery opportunity. Yeah. And like, it, it's weird, you know what, it's weird because I never, I was never confused in a Grand Theft Auto game. No. Because. Everyone sucks. Right, and that was arguably, you know, it's hard it's, uh, culturally, let alone the, with the, with gaming as the fucking epicenter of this like crazy cultural like t fucking uh, teacup tea ride that we've been on. Um, uh, the, 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 but the, you know, obviously, like like Rockstar Games in Grand Theft Auto was like this thing where it was like, hey, right. it's gaming, it's its own medium. Not only are we not accountable to standards and practices. We're not accountable to like any like uh, constructs of morality right. that even the individual human might have, which you know I, I like like I understand why people would get alarmed of that later being encroached upon. I don't know how how much thought the people that get mad put into it, but I I do remember going, boy, this is this is really actually very valuable uh, latitude to have right. in a medium in a world where we're such a successful first world empire that our television shows, even though they've progressed from someone's got to keep their foot on the floor or uh, if they're in the bedroom together to uh, being able to look at two people wearing pajamas in a bed next to each other, let, you know, let's, let's, you know, we're in danger of stagnation when we get successful and our media becomes another product like eggs on a shelf that's like so safe and so policed that, even, you know, I, it's, it's like how, you get conditioned to react to restrictive thought, right. uh, but, but, you know, or, 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 or anomalous thought with, uh, you know, pulling back. And that's all. I, so so I, I remember playing Grand Theft Auto 3 and being like, this is valuable. I, I, it's cynical. It's awful. It's so cynical. Right. But it's so, it's, a, it's, it's, it's valuable that it's expansive and, and while, while being so fucking poisonous. And it's equally poisonous to absolutely everything about society. Right, exactly. It. And uh, it's it, consistent. It, and and it was just sort of like you know it was that whole like freedom of speech is way more fucking important than than anything because through that if you, if you lose that you're certainly fucked no matter how good you think you are as a society. And uh, and 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 I mean that's a that's so long ago now, and it's weird to think of it as long ago because that game was so relatively, like, I just still think of it as, like, 
a recent <laughs> accomplishment that this Grand Theft Auto 3 represented this like gigantic kind of leap forward in sandbox open world gaming. Yeah. And, and uh, it's so anyways, but the, and, and then I don't even want to comment because it's such a minefield of like how then we keep making Grand Theft Auto games and and like even better ones through an era where like you know this gamergate shit starts happening and people are having these conversations about what 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 cultures are we promoting and why are you mad why are you mad why are you mad what are you trying to protect i'm not trying to protect anything why are you trying to attack it i didn't attack anything why are you trying to keep everything the same i'm not trying to keep shit the same i want everything she's a slut um the the but it's amazing to me that 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 you know it's it's like they had the old west version of grand theft auto red dead redemption right. and then this is seven years in the making, the sequel to that, to that game. And it's just so, it's, it's interesting to look at the tightrope that they're walking. The complete difference in like morals. But I think it's a little confusing because I think- Oh, it's it, very I, confusing. I, I wouldn't want them to- You know what the most moral thing you can do in Red Dead Redemption is? Shooting people in the foot and then tying them up and leaving them in the bushes. That's completely legal. No one will ever follow you for doing that. What is the come up? The comeuppance? Like if you get caught by the police, oh, you have to pay forty dollars to the post office. You go to the post office and you pay your thing. In Grand Theft Auto, That's it's, it. you it's go, not you confusing. Don't, you don't do time forty dollars is a lot of money, Jeff. It's not fucking twenty eighteen. In, in in Grand Theft Auto, you're always in a car. You do something wrong, you get a wanted. You get wanted stars, and the fun of it is. If you, you, you know, you got one goal, like a little kid playing tag or something, you know, you got to, you have these uh, paint shops around town. It's basically one of, one of only a few ways that you can, if you can, during a, during a high speed chase, even if you, it, it keeps increasing in stars. So the more stars you wanted, the more levels of law enforcement come out. So you, eventually it's helicopters and SWAT teams and tanks and the National Guard comes to get you. And, and at any point you can just pull into a spray shop and have your car instantly spray painted, and when you pull out, uh, as long as you don't bump anybody on the backing out, uh, you're you're a, you're free again. They're not they can't find you. Your car is a different color. Now, obviously that's ridiculous. However, if you look at it from a gaming mechanic standpoint, it's actually hard to emulate that in the old west in, under any circumstances. Yeah, you can't so, just go a, get your horse. Painted. You can't get your horse painted, and it somehow works a little better. I, but my point, it's, I don't think it's really an internal logic issue. I think it's that look. I think it's you a game design issue. I mean, I. I well, I think it's like, I think it's like they're great at making these games. I think that part of them being great at making games is that they have this, this sort of almost, it's ingrained in there because I see the same names in the credits. There's, it's not, you know, it's not like a new generation of, of, of people taking over and a, a brand. You see the same names of designers right. and stuff, and it's like, I think that they, they, it probably goes hand in hand be, being able to make such a crazy open world sandbox game and having a a mind that's probably pretty allergic to the concept of putting things on rails, right. especially morally. However, you got to admit that Red Dead Redemption 2 certainly, in a, in a game set in the Old West with multiracial characters and a bunch of women in it, there's a notable absence of, of the, the degrees of, of uh, depth in the moral sense that the game goes to compared right. to like... I can't name examples offhand, but you just kind of sense it. You're like, well, you know. It kind of just tries to slam in your face that, like, no matter what you are, you're kind of the bad guys. And I don't know. Which but maybe is, that's which the is, point of it. And, and to me, I keep getting confused, I think, because of that. I think right. it's because there's, like, a... It's like, oh, if I could just get it through my head that it's Grand Theft Auto on a fucking horse and stop... But I, but I keep being told by the game... That, it's uh, horrible when you do bad things, though, unlike in Grand Theft Auto. It feels very empty, but at this, it's like, I don't know, someone's like, how you doing? And then you, like, step on her foot in the horse, and she's like, ah, ah, yeah. And it just, like, it feels, it's like, oh, no, I, I got to reload my save. Like, it feels horrible to do anything wrong in this game, where in Grand Theft Auto, it's kind of like, ha-ha. Also, the sophistication, it, it does, it's, it's like, it's, it's a, the mechanics are like, it's a, it's a, it's a great thing. You can like walk and you pull the left trigger when you see somebody in context menu comes up. So you can kind of experience these things of like, you walk by, they say random things and you got, you got your binary option of, or I guess tr triple option because you can, you can diffuse, antagonize or greet. But the, the upshot is that you can walk in real time and almost kind of like marionette a real person in terms of like verbal encounters with strangers. 
um, if that's your jam, if you, what you want is immersiveness, so you experience walking and, and just howdy, hey, fuck yourself, hey, you don't gotta be like that, and keep walking, and, you're, and, you're, and you're, like, you're kind of like, all of these things are not, like that's time's true. not stopping, and you don't have to like, you know, load this and do that, and, and that's really cool, but the, the downside of that is, <laughs> if you're really immersed in this world, you're walking around, and people are constantly saying, I don't like the looks in your face. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm like... It, I'm and all like, you can do is tie them up and toss them in a bush. It's like, it's like you know from a gaming perspective that there's no profit in stopping and doing anything with this person. But right. it's like so immersive now that I'm like... I'm the guy that it, it, took, it took so long to go bisexual in Fallout. Uh, it's like, you know, because I, I, I just like, I have this like, I'm like, I, 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 it's, it's part of my, I think my clinical narcissism what, is you can, that you can really get me into a game and, I, and tell me that, you know, that's me and then I'll take that really serious. You sure. can't be bisexual in Red Dead? I, well, I don't you know. know you, I, you can't even have sex with the, with the sex workers there. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be into women for well, whatever I, I, reason. I mean, you, one thing that you, I, I was confused by, you said one of the hard things to do in, uh, in Red Dead Redemption 2 is uh, you can't find your left leg in a bathtub. What oh, that yeah. Mean? Yeah, that's a real thing. You take a bath. Sometimes you have to pay 50 cents to do that. If you go and take a bath, then you, after you finish washing your head, uh, there's a knock on the door, and a woman says, would you, like, would you like some help in there? And if you pay 50 cents, a woman will come in, and uh, this goes through this kind of labyrinth thing. I, there's no game to it, right? Is there no, you just, press, you just press any number of buttons that you want You're just to. Just indicating what part of your body you want washed. Um, and then there's an option to make small talk while you're doing it. And she responds with, you know, algorithmically. And uh, she... I was like, oh, it's, it's like, a, it's eventually this is, you're going to unlock a hand job or something. That's what it leads you to believe, but I don't know. After the first one, I was like, this just seems like a red herring to me. <laughs> it's really weird. But then again, that's what, I mean, Grand Theft Auto was kind of, no, they, they let it leak that there was a way to get right. a sex worker the into hot your coffee. car. Oh, uh, that's different. I was thinking the hot coffee It wasn't coffee like mod. an automatic thing. Um, anyways. Uh, but there's no, there's no funny business, no sex happening in the game? Not unless you assume something's happening under the water that is both it's instantaneous not, and though. that he has a poker face about it because he's, <laughs> that he's a cowboy and he doesn't want to... You know. But in a lot of the interactions, it sets up that he's kind of just not interested in anyone who expresses wonder, interest. You know, let's spread a rumor that he's gay. Well, I mean, yeah, who knows? He might be. But he certainly doesn't seem into it. He pisses people he's off. The, he's an asexual cowboy. It's great. That would be a huge advantage in the Old West, I think, to be asexual. <laughs> that's, that's true. Because <laughs> he's always having to go after, like, women and, and haul them into prison and stuff. You know, you can't be, be seducted or, you know... I have secessive. asexual questions. Is anybody openly asexual? Also, is that a thing? Like, like, or is it's it... a thing. Yeah. Is it, are, are, are you, I'm not even going to make eye contact because I don't want to put you on the spot if you don't want to be put on the spot. Are you, are you, are you uh, self-applying that, that phrase? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Me neither, by the way. But uh, yeah, if anybody, if anybody, if anybody's like, like confidently, like, yeah, I'm asexual. That's what I identify as. I'd, I'd, I'd be, I'd love to have a conversation with you if you don't mind. Especially being asked if some, you're also a cowboy. Some naive. Uh, that would be great. That would be. A, but I would consider. If we that get gravy. a fucking asexual cowboy up on stage. It's going to be podcast dynamite. <laughs> you. <laughs> we have a cowboy. I bet you know if you're if you're. If you really follow the code of what we understand to be the true cowboy, you would be asexual, wouldn't you? Well, yeah. Why? Why, why, why buy? True, okay. cowboys, <laughs> true cowboys have sex with land ginnies. You That's just like want bisexuality to get, you know, signal boosted in any context. You're like, you're like that guy at every protest that has the legalized weed... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think like the uh, a lot of cowboys when they because they always leave at the end you know like Shane or you know like Clint they ride off in the sunset they're like they're like bye bye sexual like bye bye <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> it is kind of defined at least in silver screen terms as like you don't I mean one of the major foundations is for sure unless you're a bad guy you don't you don't you don't cross boundaries with an unwilling uh, filly. 
you know? Like, you, you're, you're certainly not maybe regarding uh, women as equals in a society governed by reason, but uh, that's, a lot of that's not your fault as a cowboy. You're just, you're just a cowboy, but you, but, but you definitely uh, are, you know, you're not, you, you're never gonna, you wouldn't be a good cowboy if you, if you uh, took liberties. Right. What'd you say? Water world? Water world, by contrast. Uh, e e even, even in childhood, women are nothing more than maps to dry land. Something to draw upon. But there isn't a lot of westerns because there, was, there, there were small casts, small sets, and usually not a lot of women characters because for a lot of reasons, but one, that actresses were expensive. Uh, like to get a big star, like 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 you know, Hollywood starlet in the in the thing, that in the same way, kind of like in Die Hard, there's there's often scenes in um, in westerns where the bad guy and the good guy meet, and it's almost flirtatious. It's kind of like this, right. where the, the, there's kind of a sexual vibe to it. Like in Shane with Jack Pounds, when he sees Alan Ladd, like he kind of checks him out, and it's it, it's kind of like. It's, it's, it's almost a little, like, sexy. Well, definitely, yeah, I mean, they certainly land that in Westworld with Yul Brynner and, uh, what's his name? What? I mean, it's, it's like, 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 even though he's a robot pretending to be a bad guy, cowboy, Richard it's Benjamin. very it's, sexual. It's, 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 one, it's one actor with no eyebrows, another actor who's just 90% eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go home to your mama? <laughs> that it's, movie sucks. The movie, it starts <laughs> off great. <laughs> it, it starts off so good. And that they're, why are we in Rome now? Like, like they, they go to, like... It's, it's just, like, I just love the idea. That, remember in that movie, the way that you can tell these 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 robots that you can have sex with that look, look like. So, well, look at their hands, though. They, they can't. Science can't recreate the palm. <laughs> Their fingertips like, we, are all weird. That's how we felt in the '70s. We felt like well, we're gonna we're gonna get there. You know, you see these Halloween masks this year. They're pretty, but they're getting. That guy looks a lot like Nixon. And we just kind of, I, I think we thought, yeah. like, yeah, but, we, but, but we, you know, that hand. We, we, we were all intelligent design people. We were like, how do you, how do you ever make a fake hand? It's a yeah. robot. It's going to have yeah. claws. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, we, we can make a guy look just like your Brenner. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, I rewatched that with Church. and that, oof. Speaking uh, that, of Hollywood in the 70s and weird things, uh, here's a podcast recommend. I, 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 uh, uh, the, 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 there's an Australian uh, podcast. Uh, called Fatal Voyage. It's a re-examination of the of Natalie Wood's death. Uh, I guess that I guess that I guess I guess it was technically reopened or something. Uh, like because the captain that was on the boat. Uh, for those of you who don't know Natalie Wood, she was a, a West Side Story incredibly famous actor. She she married uh, uh, for a second time Robert Wagner, who's still. Alive, he was in this show called Heart to Heart, and uh, but before that, he was a movie star. They had a, you know, they, 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 then, then Natalie Wood was in a movie called Brainstorm with Christopher Walken. For some reason, this is the part that really confuses Schraub a lot more than it does me, because I, I've always, I've always equated Christopher Walken with you. Like I always, I, why? <laughs> And I imagine coming off of the Deer Hunter and having an Oscar, like 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 Schraub is Schraub, Schraub just can't get his mind around it. It's like why, who invites Christopher Walken alone onto a boat uh, to Catalina and just hand it? And I'm like, I just, doesn't it seem like something Jeff would just be like, hey, Natalie Wood, you want me? Are you got? I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go. Anything you want me to ask her? Uh, and that you wouldn't bring a date. Is that, is that how I sound? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 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 boo boo. <laughs> Why am I Yogi Bear? What am I, Rich Little? I, 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 <laughs> I had to make you sound different from me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, 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 but, anyways, but just, I mean, for those who are totally unindoctrinated to this sort of like legendary kind of Hollywood Babylon thing, Natalie Wood drowned that weekend and. Uh, um, uh, uh, it, it was like there were there were four people on the boat, including the captain, and one of them ended up dead. And there was never a, it was it was never really regarded as a homicide. And so f all this time, it's always just been this thing of like something fucked up went on on that boat. And there's there there was always the I always I always thought it was very silly and kind of provincial of people to go well. 
the two automatic courses are like, obviously it's like, he was a jealous kind of husband. He had a jealousy streak. He once followed Warren Beatty home with a gun because she was in a movie with him. And he was like, you know, he's, he's, he's capable of going there in jealous, jealousy. So obviously that's Which the first place. Which is a place. big predictor for like serious male violence and murder. It's and obviously stuff. the first place you'd go in a regular, in, in, in a regular death as you look at the husband first, right. let alone if he's the only one capable of being uh, near, near you and, and there's a history there. And there's four people on the boat. So there's the captain, Christopher Walken, the guy, and the girl. Right. Okay. And I always thought, but, and, and so that, that always makes sense to me, but I always thought it was like a very kind of Midwestern Holly, looking at Hollywood thing that people would go, you know what really happened is Robert Wagner was fucking Christopher Walken. <laughs> Natalie Wood walked in and she was like, that's it. And they clubbed her to death and threw her in the water. I'm like, come on. Like, why, why, do we, why do we just, because that's the only other scenario that you can imagine. And it's like, oh, Hollywood's bisexual and all this stuff. But it, and, and then I'm going to turn this podcast over to you, so I don't want to spoil everything. But it does turn out that Robert Wagner, that, that he was married to Natalie Wood twice. And uh, the reason they got divorced the first time is because she caught him in an, uh, 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 in an affair with a, with a man. Oh, really? And uh, so that, that doesn't automatically mean you're going to fuck Christopher Walken. I'm connecting those dots. But I, I, was, I was surprised to find that out and was like, holy shit. But, I st- but yeah, and, and, and so I, I, if we were to continue to talk about it, I'd tell what you. What was the podcast? It's called Fatal Voyage. It's just like one of those like one-off kind of mini series. Hell yeah, that sounds awesome. Things. You know what I think? There's <laughs> <laughs> another one called the RFK Tapes, I think. These are all, Co- Cody finds these and uh, we sleep to podcasts, but uh, our, I think it's called the RFK Tapes, RFK something. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a re-examination of the, uh, the, the assassination of Robert Kennedy by, by this like weird guy, Sirhan Sirhan. And, uh, uh, a really fascinating, like, intimate examination of a really nice, smart, cool guy who is absolutely convinced that this is an elaborate conspiracy, and he doesn't have tinfoil on his head, and he doesn't, he's not defensive, he doesn't start throwing things if you say you think he's full of shit, so it's like very, it's a, it's a, it's, but, but and yet the, what he's, but what he believes is is the case is so you know hard to believe you know the, but it's 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 fun it's fun to listen to for a couple episodes i mean the the, the couple being the uh, its totality i didn't i don't mean it takes a shit in the middle and, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah i like to come to Harmontown and get my recommendations for other, other podcasts, podcasts. <laughs> if you if you haven't listened to Heavyweight uh, ever on uh, Gimlet, I go to Trader Joe's to get coupons to Ralph's. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, our friend Rob Cordry was on this show. It's a good, it's a, it's a good entry point if you don't have any other. But there's, there's this there's this show called Heavyweight. It's uh, uh, God, now I can't remember the guy's name. John Goldstein, something like that. Uh, but uh, uh, it's a network, uh, Gimlet Gimlet Media. He he's. He's this guy who just like gets up in other people's business. So if you have a, uh, it's, I think it's, it's called heavyweight because if there's, it's, it's usually deals with shit that's like weighed on people for for a while and has been unresolved, and then he'll just like, you, you'll you, people come to him and say, you know, I've, I haven't spoken to my aunt in 30 years, and I'm convinced it's because she thinks I'm racist or whatever. You know, we had an argument over pretzels at this uh, the lake house or whatever, and, and I just can't talk to her. And she, I, you know, I get these mixed signals and all this stuff, and then he'll just call her, and like, like, like he, he just kind of like realized at some point in his life that the only thing he was good at was, uh, uh, you know, resolving stuff. Well, getting his nose in everybody's business. Yeah, and, I mean, and, does, and does he fix it or he? Yeah, he, no, he very much does. Yeah. Okay. Uh, otherwise, it would, he would be a horrible person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds, like, sounds like a Red Dead Redemption character. He's got a very high resolution rate. Even when it, sometimes it turns out that the person that, that thought that their issue was with someone else, it turns out that they need to confront something about themselves, uh, and he'll successfully get that. All right, so you're, you're, you're Red Dead. You're walking around. Somebody calls you an asshole. You step on their foot. They, they scream, and you... What button, physically, how do you tie somebody up? Like, what's the interface that you use a rope to, to tie somebody well, up? Well, first, Jeff, you'd hold down the LB button to bring up your weapon wheel. Okay. Hopefully, you have your lapso equipped already. Yeah, hopefully then, you loaded that out for when right. you got off your horse. Okay. Or you're on your horse. 
and uh, you use the control stick to uh, select it. And then now you have your now you have your rope equipped. And then you hold down the R trigger, I think, and the L trigger to aim and and swing it around. Oh man, you're aiming, and you let it go by letting go the trigger. And then I think you then immediately have to hit the trigger again to hold on to it. Otherwise, when you tie them up, you will immediately let them go, and they will get up and run away. But if you hold the trigger, and you hold them tied up, and then you can slowly walk to them and hog tie them with the B button. Or Thank the you X very button. much, Spencer. Yeah, my first bounty was that Black Widow uh, yeah. uh, lady. And, That's why it's uh, good to be asexual in that game. I was, well... Think of what she'd pull. Well, I wasn't tempted to do anything, but what I, I was she like... Tries, she tries to tempt you. Well, I know, but I'm not. She's, yeah, because... Yeah, but I, good I, game. I, I got my lasso out, and I was, I was like, I'm not, I'm not having any conversation with this person. I'm, and I, right. I, I successfully lassoed her from my horse, uh, but then getting off my horse, I, I let right. go of the rope. She got up and just immediately just... It was like a nightmare. She came up at the... Oh, and yeah. And she started slashing me with a knife. I almost... That, and then I just did what I always do. I ran. Right. I spent so much of that game just running right. off so, into so, the wilderness. So if you if you if you if you and throw, then come if you, back around in a big circle while while they slowly forget I ever existed and go back to doing what they were doing. If you if you tra if you lasso somebody but don't hold down the trigger once they're lassoed, do they get up and run away? Yeah, with, it's like you've essentially just with, tripped them. But now you've also lost your rope. No, yeah, no, you have infinite rope for some reason. Yeah, you're infinite rope. Oh yeah, it's Infinite great. Rope indeed. Yeah, uh, no, but I, I that same exact thing happened to me, and then she like slashed me like four times, and I was almost dead, and I like ran off fifteen feet, and then tied her up. It was great. <laughs> you really that's that's the the only thing you could do in this game is tie people up. It's amazing. It sounds it sounds um, terrible. Yeah, you could also shoot animals. It's a gorgeous game. I mean, it's really like the it's, the, yeah. the combination of the kind of the dedication of some team over there. Because I remember Grand Theft Auto V came out. Is that the one where you're Russian? I think four. I remember there was a kind of like I think there's a you know there's people you, you you can imagine there's probably camps that are like we need to make this thing look fucking gorgeous and have all right. these details and you should be able to have a cell phone and farm potatoes. And that there are times when those, those teams are the enemy of a, of a good game because you're just like, just make it a little better than San Andreas and we would all would have been so happy. Uh, but then, I mean, I think this game represents that camp uh, getting, getting, getting to have their day in court. Like, oh, they, yeah. like, they're like, the technology's here, the screens are 4K, the, the, the boxes can run it, like... Let's make a let it be photorealistic, no cutscenes. They try so hard for there to never be any transition to anything. So you're just like walking through saloon doors, and then you're in the saloon until you leave, and it's, there's never any loading or anything. Well, there is some loading. I don't 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 write letters. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's no guest. My feet are tired. I usually don't sit down until there's a guest. Uh, Nova, do you do you do you do you, do you want to come up, or are you tired of being uh, exploited? Okay. Our guest, Nova. Nova. Can I just quickly give a plug? Um, we still need some audience members for Wednesday to Friday, so if you guys want a free show sometime this week, come uh, come to Harmon Quest tapings, harmonquest.com for tickets. Oh, yeah, we're, we're doing that in a couple days, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. Saturday and Sunday, I think, are full, but we really, we really could use some more people. They're free seats, I think, so Wednesday to Friday this week, if you guys are interested. Wednesday, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my hair cut by the person that's jo whose job is supposedly only to comb my hair. Oh, no. I'm sure they're stoked about that. Yeah. So I get paid the same, but I have to touch your fucking gross scalp. Are we, are we doing like any kind of meeting? Have a meeting before this, or am I just showing up to the thing in two days and we're just going to start bone weaveling it again? Like I'd love to talk to you. Uh, I don't know when Aaron's showing up, but yeah, I mean, we should do that. Absolutely, we should do a lot of things to prepare. I kind of it really caught me off guard. I was thinking among many things that 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 ex-wife Erin McGathy would by before we were taping that she would probably pop by the show and yeah. and, and re reconnoiter with the audience. She's Hello, busy, Nova. Though. Hello. Sorry, Nova. No, no problem. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. <laughs> Why? Uh, that, that seemed that, that seemed a little equivocal. No, I'm just I don't know. I'm in a weird mood, but um, uh, yeah, I've been good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sold. Fair enough. When yeah. I'm in a weird mood, 
I usually find that when people pester me about it and make me uh, explain... It makes you normal, right? That, it just evens it out. <laughs> that it, well, it usually leads to me being so desperate to feel something that I'll even exaggerate shit. Uh, and, and it'll be a conversation that ends with the person going, Jesus Christ, well, God, feel better. Uh, like, well, you kept asking me how I was. I had to make something up. Oh. <laughs> but is your weird mood, do those still waters actually run deep? Yeah. I'm, I don't know. I'm in a weird place right now because um, I'm, I, I, I don't want to talk forever or anything. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've been trying to get down my anxiety, so I've started meditating, and then... That's great. Uh, yeah. I'm By the way, when has anyone on the show ever gotten away with talking anywhere near forever except me? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. No, I'll be interrupted if I talk too much. That's good. Um, You'll be interrupted if you're sharing like right. a, a really it's deeply like personal thing. I'll be like, well, let me tell you about that. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to try to like eat better and more regularly, and I'm going to try to start exercising, and hopefully that'll bring my anxiety down, and I'll be able to function better. It hasn't and, um, destroyed my anxiety, but it has helped somewhat to exercise. So I hope you get some relief from that. I think it'll be good. Yeah. Especially like the meditation. Um, mm -hmm. and it's kind of that, and then I'm, I'm happy and I'm doing things I like and I'm starting to relax. But then there's also like, I'm having all these existential crises and I'm upset about all the awful things happening, which usually I never pay attention to, but lately it's really hit me bad. Sure. And um, so it's this weird kind of, I'm just having a weird kind of time at home, kind of having existential crises and feeling bad and then kind of like finding uh, how to make it okay and kind of having fun and stuff. So, yeah. At home, uh, you, you, I know you're, you're, you're quite young and you live in, you live in with the folks. Yeah. And, uh, but, and, and I, you're, you're, stop me if I, I don't, I only know so much about you and I assume none of it is things that you don't want me to blurt into a microphone, but you, yeah. your, your, your dad, uh, uh, picked you up from the show yeah, when he they takes were me talking. Here. He, he, just, he drops you off. He doesn't come in to watch. He's just like, go watch that podcast. Yeah. He drops me off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he works from home so he can pick up his stuff and work at a coffee shop or anywhere and he likes to get out of the house. So it's, it's, it's good for both of us. He definitely doesn't mind it. Do you mind talking about the situation at home? Sure. Is it, is it, is it, is it anxiety inducing right now? For... Oh, no, I just kind of, I've realized, um, I've been... Well, yeah, if we, can, if we want to get deep, if that's fine. <laughs> I'm, uh, what do you think these people are craving? I just talked about other people's podcasts for 40 minutes. Um, so th there, needs, there needs to be bloodshed, or they're going to be like, I want my eight, ten dollars $10 back. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, life has been weird for a while. I, um, in senior year, I went into like a half homeschool program that turned out to be the worst thing for me because there was no structure, so I barely graduated. And um, Should have gone full homeschool. That's a joke at the expense of our public school system. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I should have definitely stayed in. <laughs> just for me. That's, just for me. That's a, that's a real criticism of her parents' homeschooling uh, no. ability. <laughs> no, because it was on me, because it was a half homeschool program where the students kind of decided their own curriculums almost, and mm -hmm. a lot of them did really well because they were kind of different kind of kids, and a lot of them were geniuses and stuff. But for me, it did not work. I needed structure, and yeah. You mean a lot of these programs typically go well because you're referring to other kids? No, I just meant mine. I, I, I don't know about other ones, but homeschool can be really good for certain people. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, Usually kids that are like, they could be two grades ahead, or they're really, really interested in a super specific thing and really good at it, or things like that. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you have recourse to therapy? Are you in any kind of therapy? Yeah. Yeah, I've been in therapy for like two years. Well, I've been in and out of therapy since I was like a kid. But um, I've had one. That person probably in... tells you not to blame yourself for like a lot, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get, I, get, um, I get guilty about kind of like being the way I am or something or I kind of used to. And she tries to tell me like, no, it makes sense why you are how you are. And it doesn't matter anyway. I try to be, sometimes I'll be like, why is this thing, you know, about me? And and she'll, great grammar, um, and she'll, uh, and she'll be like, it doesn't matter. It, all that matters is that it's like here and what we do about it. And if we accept it or if we try to get rid of it or whatever, it doesn't matter how or why things are the way they are. Yeah, that's a very whatever. religious question. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I guess it's kind of existential. Yeah. Why am I having this problem? Like, yeah. It's that like, is did, really existential. Yeah. I've thought about that a lot. Yeah. I've I got, like that aspect know. of modern therapy that there's, there's been a swing into the focus on the concept of happiness. And that, uh, like, like that my, my therapist is constantly saying, because I'll accidentally ask her, like, like, I don't know, should I do this or should I do that? Or some kind of question that's more subjective. And she'll go, look, I don't know. I'm your mechanic. I'm here to make you happy. Oh, interesting. Right, like, like, like it's like, it's like, like, like th that's the the goal is for me to be happy, not for me to be a good person necessarily. Although those things tend to go hand in hand, because if you have a definition of good person and you achieve it, you're probably going to be happier than if you live in defiance of your concept of goodness. Yeah, well, that's my thing too. Is that I have extremely high moral standards just for myself, not even for anybody other than myself. But um, despite the fact that I don't think I come anywhere close to meeting those or even other people's standards. I'm constantly told all the time, mostly by my therapist, that I'm too hard on myself and that I'm too critical. And I'm like, mm, really? Are you sure? Like, you know, are you sure I shouldn't be harder on myself even than I am? And she's just like, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, what was I gonna? Oh yeah, for, for, for me, it's usually pretty much everything I've ever had that I brought into therapy has been like, it's okay though, like, you know, it's not that big a deal or kind of like, mm -hmm. and not in a fake way, but really just like, no, that's fine. Like, it's okay or right. I don't know. I almost yeah. saw, I detect a tone in your voice that's like, if you're like me, that's a little dissatisfying. You want, you want some good wills to get hunted. You, 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 yes. you want, you want, you yes. want epiphanies, you want to do dramatic work. I mean, I know, it was crazy. Yeah. Um, I spent a lot, I just, what my first 10 therapists, I would very often pull out the insult challenge. It was like, look, I've been here three times. Like, what do you get paid to do? I'm still fucking crazy. Um, you know what? Yeah, what my problem is is that I'm extremely self-aware. So I'll go into therapist and I'll explain all these things about myself. And you know, I think it could be caused by this thing and right. I think this might be a way to fix it and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, and people are noticing this about me and that's not the way I was. Or whatever. And therapists are just like, I don't, know, I don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's why my current therapist is really good. And I don't know. She's very honest, as far as I can tell, at least. Um, she's... Or very good at being dishonest. <laughs> I, exactly. What did she do, for, for, for all our therapists listening, uh, what did she do? Uh, what was like a moment when you were like, okay, you're off the chopping block, or okay, I'm going to maybe come up or down to your level, but in any case, like, work with you a little bit here, as opposed to, like, when is this bitch going to help me kind of like, oh, thing. Oh, oh, at first I thought she was kind of too hard on me sometimes, even though, again, I think I'm hard on myself. When other people are hard on me, I'm still like, well, don't do that, you know? Right. Like, um, well, that's, yeah, I mean... <laughs> don't call me out on things That's I'm the thing, though. Well. I mean, Sarah Silverman was the first person to point that out to me. She was like, like, <laughs> self-loathing, self-loving, like, it's, it's about Same. you. And, like, 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 nobody's more defensive than someone that's self-loathing. Like, like, you're like, yes. oh, I'm just a poopy pants, and but someone like, well, goes I'm like, like well, you do have a little bit of poop in your pants, and you're like, you're a fucking asshole. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're all the exactly. more outraged. You're like, I just shot myself, and you're yeah. shooting me through the hole? Exactly, exactly. It's yeah. outrageous. I know. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, I think I, I, at first I thought maybe she was a little bit too much of a person that was very blunt and, and I don't know, didn't want to, like, sugarcoat or whatever. And it's like, I don't know, I like people to be nice. I like people to be genuine. But if, when it's, like, a therapist, I don't like if they're, like, kind of hard on me. And I think she got to a point where she is still like that and she doesn't sugarcoat things, but she's learned that I respond to positivity and not negativity. <laughs> so she's kind of just learned who I am and what I need, you know, and that some people need to be like, they need to have a kick in the butt, you know, but then some people need to have a little hope of like, you can do it, you know? Like it kind of, it really depends on the person what's going to actually motivate you. I think I, I think my therapist, it was, the, the threshold for me was when it was finally said out loud, because I've, I, you know, I, 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 when it comes to drinking, everybody else other than me is a square. Like, like, like they're not, they don't have, they don't understand what I understand about, about drinking, my relationship with it. It's, not, it, it, and I don't, I get nervous when squares get into that territory, 
And then I get nervous about getting nervous about getting nervous because squares react to you getting nervous about the subject of you drinking the way that they've read on the Milton Bradley box for um, playing talk to an alcoholic that's just like, denial's the first line. And it's like, yeah, okay. So like, and I, so I did, and then you get nervous about it. And, and like, it just took a really long time of cat and mouse with her bringing up my drinking uh, where I was like, on one hand, not willing to talk about it with her, but on the other hand, not willing to not be willing to talk about it yeah. because the, I didn't want to fuel either of those furnaces. And uh, and then there was just some crucial conversation we had where I, I she she I, maybe she finally figured it out that what she needed to do was promise me that she was never going to ask me to stop drinking, which you would think would be a horrible thing to do uh, because you either have to stop or you don't. But it it because she finally said that. I've now had so many more conversations about something that's so fundamental to my psychology, which is my yeah. relationship with self-medication, than I ever would have with anybody who, no matter how noble their purpose was, just going to take a position of like, well, let's talk about your drinking. And she finally, you know, just like 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 a cowboy coming up to a spooked horse, you know, she finally, it's, like, it's just like the horse needs to know you're not going to throw a saddle on it, which you are. <laughs> But you know, it's, and it's, I honestly, it's like, like, like Dave, Dave Klein's not here, is he? Because otherwise, there would have been seven whoops so. by now. Nope. But uh, nope. Dave, Dave, Dave Klein, my physical uh, uh, therapist, if you will, like the guy that comes and watches me do tummy crunches. Yeah. Um, uh, well, that's a pretty uh, pejorative description of my occupation. I, I, the, the guy that the guy that makes me do tummy crunches. But it's like, like Wait, early was that, on. Was that me again? Uh, <laughs> Early on, there was a there was a lot of like weird because I, I, I Instagram lived all of it, and there's so there's probably an archive of it where like I was like so like that was like this control freak barrier. Like I don't want another person being able to come into my home and just tell me to do more sit-ups if I feel like I've done enough. It's like it it just it, like it, it hits this nerve, not laziness, um, uh, but, but something beyond that where it's like, I think it goes back to just being afraid on the playground of like guys that were good at football or something like that. But anyways, like it, now that I think about it, it's like the exact same thing. I trust is so powerful and rare. Yeah. I just got to a point in therapy Remember when I promised you wouldn't be able to talk forever? Um, <laughs> I just got to a point in therapy where it's, it's like there's so much shit that was like such a sink full of dishes to do that I was so unenthused about. I was like, can we get to this fundamental stuff? Uh, and it's like, no, you gotta, you, get, you can't, can't do that stuff. There's fucking macaroni stuck to this tray. Yes, it's been there forever. Yes, you don't think it's important, but let's, let's soak this shit and all that blah, blah, blah. And I finally now just started to have conversations with her about the fact that I don't have intimate relationships. Like I have lovers and then I have my kind of round table of musketeers. <laughs> Metaphor mix kind of intentional because it's like, what are we? Uh, I, I work with my friends. I There's always like, it's always a business. It's always a, there's always an exit you know, available. I don't, I don't have these friendships that I see portrayed in movies and television, let alone described in Hallmark cards, but I also don't know if those are real. But, like, I don't, it's like trust. Like, I don't want anybody to be able to, like, uh, hurt me. It's, it's very generic sounding stuff, but, like, it, it's so fucking profound to me. Like, I can't just, like, Spencer and I were talking about this when we were walking in New York. About vulnerability. Yeah, Dan also talks about that a lot on the podcast that comes out next time. I think it was a really valuable thing. You Not that this podcast it. is therefore uh, worthless. I think, no, this I one's think, better. I think this was money well spent. I think it's good you guys drove to a bad neighborhood. Yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> I just, I, how do you, because Spencer kind of spontaneously offered me while we were walking and talking about it. He had this like, you know, odd right. personal 
visual metaphor for his heart. Like a mental image. And he was like, I know it's weird, but I see my heart like this. And I was like, oh, no, I see my heart in an incredibly specific way, too. Do you have an image in your head of how your heart works? <laughs> Maybe sometimes I think about it. I think more how my brain works. Um, but like when people hurt your feelings and stuff. Like the way, yeah, the, way, the paths in and out. Like if, if you pictured like your feelings as being like in the center of your chest and then like you had to like draw a picture with crayons of like how it works mechanically, not pumping blood, but right. like letting things in and out, like letting feelings, whatever. Is there like an image that comes to mind? Works Mine's a spiky clamshell. Uh. Like Cloyster from Pokemon. <laughs> With a heart in the middle. Um, but it used withdraw already. <laughs> in order to give you time to think, I will, not, not, not to uh, 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 satisfy my fetish for talking over people, I, right. I, I, will, I, will, I will do mine, and then you can, maybe if you want to take a whack at yours. But uh, I, I just, I just it's, fun, it's been about how, it, it, like, I've always just had this very clear image of this very steampunk iron orb. Um, with, with with rivets and like it's just it's just absolutely proudly defiantly sealed off, um, but powerful, uh, and that it can you know there's very specific channels coming out of it that go out of that completely out of its vicinity because the power that's coming out of it has no place around it that would be really foolish architecture. Um, and so it carries things as far away as possible where they can be used and processed and help other people. <laughs> and, but the real key is that if you're standing near it, there's no fucking way you're going to get anything but burnt or scalded or, or, or you know, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like a point of pride how inaccessible it is because there, it's like there's this feeling in my head of like that I, that I took me all this time to re-examine where I'm like, it, that's how it should be. It should be proud of that. It's like playing a tower defense game. Like, 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 like oh, look, my inventory, you can't get to near it. You shouldn't be able to. You'll fuck it up. You don't, archers. Uh, so, all right, now you go. Better be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the way that I was like, I was like, oh, I haven't, I haven't thought about my heart visually like that, but I, I, I think the way that you're talking about your heart is, I'm just... Really gay? Of, it's Nova! <laughs> What the fuck? You what? Yeah, we're opening ourselves up to yeah, you. It's so fucked up. No wonder I keep a fucking iron shell around my heart. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, um, the homophobic attacks. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I think the way you're just you're, you're thinking of your heart is maybe I've thought about my brain, but it's like maybe I feel the same way about it. Um, when I think about who I am and my emotions and how I can be hurt, I'm just kind of picturing my brain. But um, I think I think I would probably think about it in um, I don't know. I, I I got really into I got really into Inside Out when I came out and I, when it came out and um, not when I came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and so, um, just in the thought of like there's the five emotions, you know, and then they have these essences and. Um, don't forget those memory islands. God damn it, that story has and problems. The orbs. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I don't mean I don't to derail you. I don't. No, 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 don't get mad. Don't get mad. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't get mad. Um, but it, that's it like, made me cry too. I can. I. I also cried during the movie. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not stomping on your garden and going. No, There's nothing yeah. of value here. No. I, yeah. Um, well, it, but because it's also like a real psychology concept of there being like five emotions and stuff. And I think I think of myself as a very emotional being and a person of sort of moods and flavors and whatnot. That sounds stupid. But um, I think maybe if I were to picture like my heart, it would be sort of a swirling essence of different colors and maybe sort of like smoke. Um, I don't know. Like I've thought about like aura. I've been told by like more than one person like that my aura is purple, um, which is, I mean, that's like two people. So it's not like, oh, that's the craziest coincidence ever. Like it must be real. But um, <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it, it's purple. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Jeff, do you see auras? <laughs> no. Okay. I believe that. It's psychic. Just Novus. Isn't purple a good one? I uh, guess there's yeah. not a lot of bad auras. They describe, I, the people who've told me I had a purple aura said it's like uh, sort of cosmic. It's like right. 
kind of different and out there and like, I don't know, loving or bright or something, which it sounds really, really narcissistic coming from my own self. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I think I would think of it as just sort of a thing of feelings and different things. And I don't know, I kind of match things up in my head of sort of like, oh, these things all, all have the same essence or the same vibe. And that's just sort of the way I think about things more than like concrete things. That sounds healthier. Uh, less practical, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, I think it's yeah. interesting that things get more complicated when you get up to your brain. And the reason yeah. I will Dan explain that I find that interesting <laughs> is because I don't feel that way at all. It's like, like the brain for me is like, get up there like where you can just run your fucking mouth and for better or for worse, it'll all come out and wash and all this stuff. However, and I know you don't want to be, you know, laser focused on as a representative of anything or whatever, but the thing that makes you different from me is, is that at some point in your life you started to feel conflicted about identity in a way that is absolutely incompatible with like neurotypical mainstream society. Whereas I never had to think about myself as anything but a fucking cool rebel, even though I was just the, like, like, because I never woke up going, there's a thought in here that according to that Miller Lite billboard is uh, criminal or like cruising for a bruising or maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I need to just get through it and all this stuff. And so it's like, it's, it's, it's terrifying for me to think about the brain, which for me is like, get up to your strong corner, get away from your heart as like the place that is actually needs to be tower defensed and, and organized and, yeah, well, I think that that maybe come from sort of, um, that might come from sort of uh, like how, well, because like, um, I mean, that's kind of why things have been so weird for me lately is because it was only like a couple months ago, like probably less than six months ago or around that when I got diagnosed with autism by my therapist. And because she she hadn't said anything, but I think she knew about it, kind of like with your therapist where right. it's like she finally felt okay bringing up the drinking. One day I came in and I was like, okay, come on ever since I was, as long as I can form memories, I can remember people being like, uh, oh, you're kind of different, or knowing that I'm kind of different, or just being kind of different, and all these stupid, tiny little ways, you know, um, that I'm like, okay, but like nobody else I know is thinking that way, even if it seems like a small thing. Like it's just sort of like this thing that is all of me. It's not like one particular thing about me. So then when she said that, and I kind of absorbed it and everything, I was like, okay, because yes, like you said, I guess what would be different about us is that as long as I can remember, I've thought about like who I am and like how I'm different from other people and um, I don't know how I'm the same and stuff. And yeah, I've always been kind of analyzing like who I am and what I am. And I've, I've never been able to kind of bring any sort of practicality to that of like, like um, a lot of kids like, um, act different to avoid being bullied. I mean, I wasn't bullied too bad, but um, it never even occurred to me that right. I could try being different. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, well, okay, this is it, then I get bullied then, or, or this is how I try to make them stop the bullying, but it never occurred to me to ever be anything other than what I am. Yeah. And now that I'm, like, 20 and thinking about trying to maybe get a job and stuff, it's... Uh, I'm thinking like, oh, well, do I have to enter into a world where I'm not going to be able to be me and I'm going to have to do practical things or something? And, and I don't know. I think that's why, uh, like the, the one thing I love about the autistic community <laughs> um, uh, the, 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 is that like humanity itself in a really magnified way, be, precisely because there is a deprivation of objective truth that comes more uh, easy to... Uh, typical people that, or in the case of, if you look at humanity, in the, it's like easy for a skunk to know if it's doing what it should be doing. It's easy for a giraffe, um, fucking giraffes. The, the, no, uh, <laughs> shout out to giraffes who are like dying in Griffith Park Zoo right now. So, so let's, 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 get, let's, let's not be, uh, let's not be mean. I don't to, think it's a zoo anymore. Sharks are great, whatever, don't derail me. I'm on a fucking roll, can't you hear this? Um, the, the, but, 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 the, but, the, but, the, but the, as we, when we talked to our friend Steve Silverman, who wrote Neurotribes, that, 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 that within humanity, that uh, people who have autistic traits also are like, they're like, well, wait, what, what am I? I don't have this sort of like compulsion for uh, uh, these sort of like easy truths or whatever, 
But because of that, even as uncomfortable as it, as it feels, this is Dan's planning autism, Dan's planning everything to you, but, the, but, but this is just, I just find this to be a very romantic and wonderful concept. The, because of that, there's an increased attention on it. There may not be what feels like facile awareness, and that can feel so alienating and so sad that it's like, it's that Pinocchio syndrome thing, which, you know, Autistic people, it looks like they hate in television and stuff. They hate like neurotypicals going like, oh, bleep bloop just wants, oh, to, be wants to be human. Um, but yeah. at the same time, there at the core of that is this idea of I am separate, so like you wake up the same as everything and don't even have to make a choice. Here I am wondering who the fuck I am. Those people have this power to examine the things that other people take for granted and go, you know, I'm sh yeah, then that's why I think this tradition of like creatives and artists and things, it's like, you're, oh, I'm going to make Calvin and Hobbes because I don't know what the fuck it means to be this or that. I don't mean to diagnose that guy, but anyways. Well, I, I, I think I haven't really heard that specific take on autism, which is really interesting. I fucking coined it. <laughs> Um, but I've heard that a lot about being trans because gender is so deeply ingrained in our society and from the smallest to the biggest ways that if you think I'm not that, what everything seems to be, it's like, oh, I feel like I'm starting from scratch or something and yeah. all these personality traits. I have to like, yeah, you examine things more and you don't like feel like you can fall into easily defined things. And, yeah, you know. thank God for people going like, finally like, hey, you know what? There actually is such a thing as, as somebody that doesn't even, that can't, that doesn't know. Like, uh, you want to play some duck, duck, goose game? I, I, maybe duck, maybe goose, maybe both. I don't, like, like, why don't we ask? Like, and, and of course you're going to get those tomatoes thrown at you, but like, it, it is such a, it's like, it makes every single person at every bachelorette party, every uh, uh, construction site, these, these, these archetypes we conjure of the most binary committed people, my, myself included, like after all the reaction of like, oh, what's next? Come on. Um, then, then thought has to happen just for the fuck of it. Even, you know, it can start as like, uh, 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 what you think is punching down curiosity is like, all right, well, let me get this straight. And it, but it, those roads can at least lead to inspection because it, it's, I, I think it's been such an important thing for that reason. It's like a skeleton key to all this other shit because also, as I've said, like, and I don't know if this is offensive to, to, to people, but, but uh, I'll learn that it is for, for the reason I learned it is, but I've always thought in the back of my head, you know, there's never gonna be a million trans movement, literally. Just be, it's never gonna be it's 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 never gonna be this thing that we're used to, which is like numbers, 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 um, and good because we've entered a world where that numbers are not what are making things change. Sometimes oh, catastrophically, it can take one troll and twenty bots to fuck up an entire. Uh, thing that actually is a pillar of society or whatever it, it we, that we we need to actually graduate beyond the the that this populist idea of democracy where it's like well if you're a million people you're less important than two million people and and get into like okay we got to make sure we have to have an acid test and it can come down to one individual which is more you know I think I think it's I think it's not only more liberal. It's also I think that it's more uh, practical in terms of becoming a planet of eight billion people that are all connected telepathically and trying to get the fuck off of a burning cinder that they've uh, 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 eaten all the giraffes off of. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to have a fundamental respect for humans. We're not gonna be able to continue to have curveballs. You know, like, like we can't, it's like the, 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 the shot clock is so near zero. It, we cannot continue to go, okay, it's okay that you're black, but now let's get back to work. What? You're a woman? That's, get out of here. Like we, we got to stop being so thrown by people saying, I, I over here, table five needs bread. Um, we can't keep going like close the restaurant. Fuck you. Why are you eating here? What's food? Should we make it illegal? We have to just get get to a place where we're like, table five needs bread. Got it. So, like we, 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 it's a terrible metaphor, but yeah. but like. I, I think I get it though. Um, yeah, I, I. Yeah, I think it's 
pretty insane. Although also just knowing about the nature of humans or something. Um, uh, like I think, I mean, like it makes sense logically, but when, if you think, like if I really think about it, it just, it makes, it's so insane to me, like, the rules we've created and how many rules are created. We think of, like, oh, the 50s were insane, you know? You had to have your fork on the right. That's crazy. I'll have my fork on the left. But it's like we we're still have so many deeply ingrained things that go way beyond where you put your fork. Like, what, what a harmless, you know, rule to have in your society. But there's deeper ones that are harmful like or racism. not harmful. <laughs> yeah, but there's also, like, little Just things. Just to name a few. Yeah, there's, there's things that are really... And really big and, and really bad like that, but there's also like little things that it's weird that it's a rule, but on such a large scale, I don't know. It's just yeah, you get indoctrinated into shit, and and, and, include, and everybody wants to be a good person pretty else. much, and you go like, okay, now if I put my fork on the wrong side, I'm called an anti-hero. I'm called a, uh, a, a an upstart. I'm called a, a kind of like cool person, and but it's like that can be taught to you as a child, and then that person precisely because, and reference back to me getting offended with, in the midst of, in the midst of my self-deprecation, somebody suggests that I'm a bad person, I get mad at them and abuse them, um, that is the problem with uh, kind of like institutionalized liberalism, for instance, where you go, hey, I, I, I'm a liberal, I voted for this, I understand that racism's bad, here's how racism's defined, here's whether I'm sexist, here's whether I've ever sexually harassed anyone, here's whether I'm an advocate of this community or that, and, don't, and then someone says, hey man, what you did there was a little disrespectful, and you bite their fucking head off because, what am I, a Nazi? How dare you, and all that stuff. And I think that it's, that illustrates this wall that, that, you're, that you're talking about, and, instead of this process that we've, it has been fine because it's moved at a speed faster than the average caveman, which is like, build the wall here. Okay, wall needs to be torn down. We're gonna move it 20 feet out, everybody. Okay, all right, oh, grumble, grumble. Now it's harder to get to work, grumble, grumble, but nothing collapses. We're hitting this tipping point now where the walls are digital, and so is the road to work, and so is the path to democracy, so is the, it, and it's like, holy shit, if we can't get it through our head that just in general, take it, take it as it comes and don't allow yourself to be fucking thrown by other people. Um, we're, if, we don't, if, we don't, if we don't upgrade that firmware to, to where we don't have to have a fucking forum, I'm, I'm repeating myself, like we're gonna, we're gonna die. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, uh, in the news we're today, <laughs> We probably are already dying. Yeah. You were prompted to raise your. You were. You, you were compelled For to raise your hand. a while now. I just had a question. Uh, has your therapist ever asked you if you want to be depressed? <laughs> the question was. Mine has. Has, <laughs> has, has my ther has our has any has, has if we both answer it? Has your therapist ever asked you if you want to be depressed? No, she never has. But I've asked. I've, I've always wondered that. Ask her if she can ask you that. <laughs> that could be well, fun. Well, you, you've talked about how you are like really comfortable with being unhappy, you know, or comfortable being depressed or being right. a workaholic or something. And right. So I yeah, yeah, actually, I hadn't I hadn't put it in that context, but in that sense, very much so. She's definitely like lowered that challenge, or rather, warning. She's like, sounds like you're getting really close to happiness, and like all you right, yeah. like coping with it can bring out all kinds of shit. Yeah, like, I think I self-sabotage. I'm terrified of success. I've tried, like, eating and exercising for years and years and years, but I always have this thought of, like, what if everything gets better then? What the fuck will I do? Like, It's been such a huge, well, at least huge you'll be challenge feeling better this last hmm. year because It'll traditionally help. what I do is, oh, uh, look, he, he made that thing. Oh, everyone's happy. Oh, they just, they, oh, look, Annie and Jeff to get together, or maybe he's going to kiss Britta. You have a fandom. You have, you have people on Tumblr. They like your show. You're doing good. You did it. You did it. You fucking monkey. You did it. You made other monkeys happy. And then, boom, what's he doing? So, like, I, I'm, I'm, like, getting mad at Sony and, like, driving home in tears because my show is so important, and how can they understand it? It's like, you look back on that, and I go, like, self-sabotage, it has to be. There was never enough of a threat that I ever had to go to DEF CON this or that. However, I still, I'm like, fuck people who say pick your battles and all that stuff. And this last year has been therefore like this thing where it's like, okay, you did it, you made, you made a, a successful show. 
uh, by all the metrics that you used to uh, abide by. Also, in addition to that, you're going to get recognized and rewarded for it to the point where you might die happy or whatever that fucking goal is. And all of a sudden, it seems like you're actually being targeted unfairly. However, if you talk about it, it could cause enough of a shitstorm to that to get you fired. Uh, it would it would be feeding the trolls. It, it would be, and it's like, oh wait, where does the self sabotage end? Does it end when you stop talking about the things that upset you? Because my mouth gets me fired a lot. And so one would reason if they were trying to destroy my life that it would be as easy as lobbing a dead cat into a part of the courtyard where I was bound to put on a show about it and spread disease and take my whole kingdom down. Um, and so then you get into, oh, now I'm doing things because it's what the enemy doesn't want. And I'm like, when did I become a fucking liar for a living? When did I wake up every day and go, First of all, what do you think? Okay, now what do you say? And have those two things be separate. It's miserable. It's, it's, it's not as miserable as anybody listening. Everyone has those problems, but it's like, it's like th that, that's why it's been, it's been a weird year. Because I'm like, wait, you can beat the people that want to destroy you by never paying any attention to it. And... It's like, it feels like going like this while people kick you, which I've never done. But then again, I've never been a huge counter puncher. I'm not like a fucking warrior. I don't go like, nobody fucks with me. I, what I do is I, is I, every week, I go, well, this happened today. Someone wrote this about me. Someone said this. This is how that felt. And then no matter what, every day I go home, I'm like, every week at least I recalibrate. And I go, well, I don't, I don't have anything bouncing around in my head anymore. But we're, yeah, we're, as I keep referencing, we're a year now going into this, this, this like, I'm like, what am I, a fucking senator? Where I'm like, it's like, it's like, it's like the smart thing for me to do to like be polite or comported. Like, 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 is that what enemies want? Do we live by what enemies? But, but I had my 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 therapist got. Yeah, she finally got there, and I did say this in New York, so I'll be repeating it. But um, she finally said, "So, so you are a forty-five-year-old man who has been able to say, I don't care, forever, uh, and now you care." And that's difficult. And it sounds really, it's a really, really unfortunate thing that the messengers of that uh, were, have to be trolls, Nazis. Uh, and she didn't have to finish her thought because then I got it. I was like, oh, yeah. So in other words, if, if it weren't these stupid stories and these stupid times, like it would be time for me to graduate from uh, uh, deliberately disaffective, disaffected, I don't care about nothing, you can't get near me, it's a wonder my, I, I was married for eight months, kind of thing, you know, it's like, to holy shit, I love someone, holy shit, I'm proud of my job, holy shit, I could, I, I, I don't want to get fired, holy shit, I don't want to hurt people, holy shit, there are people out there that that, that you can hurt by doing nothing. Holy shit, there are people out there that I've hurt when I thought I was the victim because they didn't like me enough. Um, holy shit, I am part of the problem even by not being part of the problem. And holy shit, there are people who are lying in wait, drooling for any sign of vulnerability so they can jump on me. And any, any nutsack sticking out, they will grab and twist and try to rip off because they don't even believe I'm real. Um, and it's like, like, welcome to the party, which is not even, it's like, let alone being famous, it's like, I think that's everyone over the age yeah. of 30. 
Everybody has to go to a job that they, where they have to like fucking, you know, they have to worry about, you know, the th- like, like, oh, my happiness is, you know. But th- that's the negative way of putting it. Everyone in adulthood starts to realize what they love and what they like. And, the, and then the crucial key is don't worry about whether or not to be vulnerable. Be honest. Keep being honest. Because if, you, if, you, if you're honest and you say, here's a nutsack, it's on my knee and someone runs up and kicks it, okay, ouch. Like, but the, 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 you can't just rearrange and go, and go like, the, like, my knee's bulletproof because that's what nutsacks are. They're bulletproof. Like, like, and it's like, it's like, like that, it's like, I, you know, I, I want live you a to fucking ex- lie. I, I want you to extend this metaphor as long as you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like in Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. It's like in but I it. really think I, you know, and I, so, so talking to this youngster here, I'm saying like, you know, like, it, it, whatever's going on with you, you know, like it's, and it seems like you got good parents because you're not, you're not, you don't, it doesn't sound like you're a product of abuse or, or, or alienation on the home front. You have a, you have a dad that's dropping you off and picking you up here, and, it, it, and, and yeah. uh, you, it. That, that could be a higher challenge because you don't have anybody to blame but yourself and then you don't know what that's supposed to mean and all that stuff. But So you, what you've got to do to maintain your sanity, I think, is connect and share and, 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 and understand that you will be assailed and hurt, but that pain isn't real. It's, it's real. Like it's a real out. feeling, but it's not, it's not real destruction. Because, because the only real You're destruction is if up. a tentacle goes out and someone kicks it and it hurts so you recoil, which is what we all do in response to trauma, then that's the actual physical effect of the kick, is that there's no more tentacle there anymore. That's a place where there's no more connection. But the pain of the kick didn't actually damage the tentacle. It's a dumb metaphor, because of course if you kick a tentacle, you're going to damage it. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's like when you touch a snail's eye, it pops right back out. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think... Well, what's up, Ray's Handy? The, our new character, Handy Ray's. Uh, well, yeah, why don't you come up and grab a mic and... and, uh, and, uh, and what's that? It's someone's uh, birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at uh, our Jeff, world. Do you think I could have some water? Uh, maybe? Co- co- come on up, birthday. Thank you so much. <laughs> Three people again. <laughs> I, 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 I'm suddenly a fan of my podcast because I just like that idea. And he's like, it's like this. And then another person goes, just, just bring him up. And then, I, and, then, and, then, and then a woman goes, it's my birthday. <laughs> I like all of that for all reasons. I didn't mean to start anything. I just had a follow-up question because I'm yeah, well, it's, in the topic. you know, yeah, I don't think we're. What we're, day's we're, your birthday again? 11-11. It was yesterday. Oh. Happy birthday! Thanks. What's your name though? <laughs> Carolyn. <laughs> Carolyn. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi guys. Sorry. Hi, Caroline. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet nice you. Meet you. Yeah. What's Nova. Your name? Mm-hmm. Asa. Nice to meet you. Asa. Asa. Hi. Dan. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Would you like a water. Birthday. Oh, a birthday water. I would love it. Oh, yeah, I could use a Coke. I could use a Coke. (laughs) Can of Coke. (laughs) Turkey, mayo, (laughs) lettuce, tomato, lightly toasted. A joke. Okay, Okay, Asa, what was your follow-up? My my follow-up question was, how do you then... uh, You you answered my former question of, do you think that you want to be depressed? But my follow-up was, like, how then do you distinguish between your maladaptive behavior versus behavior that is healthy but then is punished. You know, like you're talking about being right. honest and being upfront with people in big platforms like this, which seems healthy, I but then you've learned to like recoil from that. So how do you distinctify between maladaptive behaviors versus like good My ones? theory as of the last couple of weeks that 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 made me so relieved because it makes me comfortable again is that that is that the answer is whether or not it's true. Uh, because that was for so long my definition of, of uh, it, it's like it, true. I, I rubbed a mannequin leg on my nipple. I have a nylon fetish. I, I put a thing in my butt. You know, people. It's like it's like there's no such thing as truth that should hurt you. Um, there's technically one. You know, if you were, for instance, a pedophile, like there's a we have this like go-to crime where we go uh, because, or you know, aside from just 
regular rape, uh, like, like of a non-consensual person. It's like, there's absolutely, it's like the word pedophile is the only thing worse than anything sexually in, in addition to being worse than a Nazi. And, uh, uh, or so we feel emotionally. And so like other, if you weren't that, uh, then theoretically anything that you were uh, anything that, that 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 you could say out loud in this country, sh it should not be anything that you that would that would automatically cause destruction to your life. Well, it could cause embarrassment, but it shouldn't cause you actual loss of property. Well, that's really interesting because sometimes I'll get into a space where I'm feeling bad about myself, and then I'll ask my therapist like. Do you think it's okay if I start playing this video game because I like it and stuff? Like, I, I just feel really guilty about doing things that I enjoy. Um, and um, one and one time I was just like, uh, can I just, like, you know, facing adulthood, you're like, wow, you can really do anything, mostly. I was like, can I just do anything I want? And, and she said, she said, yes, well, you can, because I know that you're not going to do anything that's going to... Right, like maybe <laughs> like if you destroy were, your life if, or someone else. Well, else's. she knew you were a heroin addict, but but I, th I th you know, and you were you were you needed there for it. But but my yeah, my therapist always said right away, just like if it's free and fun, do it. Yeah, if you're not hurting anybody or right. yourself, is what mine says. Yeah. Yeah, and so that is the answer to Ace's question, which is like because be, I have the luxury. But my heart goes out to people who aren't in this shoe, uh, aren't in these shoes. Hence the episode where I did I went to bat for pedophiles. <laughs> it was like a hundred episodes ago where I had seen that pervert park documentary, and I was like, God damn it, that must suck because I can't control my sexuality. Uh, uh, so what if what if you couldn't and your sexuality was literally illegal and literally involved hurting people? Um, uh, shouldn't shouldn't we spare a thought for uh, for for a treatment and whatnot to break the cycle? And uh, uh, but uh, the, I have the luxury of like as bad as it gets is as what you see, which is like I've uh, I just fascinated with myself and like I've I, I like toes on my nipple and I like girls in <laughs> pantyhose and I like uh, 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 everything that I've talked about for 300 episodes of this podcast, which means I have that privilege of if I just dump everything from my brain out of my mouth. Um, then along the way, the worst I can do is use the wrong pronoun, say the N word, these sort of like, like kind of like verbal gaffes that could Social be. Social contracts. But you'd have to be, you'd have to desire to destroy me to then take those, uh, those mistakes and go. Therefore, we should destroy this person. You know, like, like um, you, you, and 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 that I think is the reality that we have to cope with, which is. Uh, if somebody wants to hurt you, you there's no way to beat them in the game of I'm hurtable. And, it, and it's not a victory to be unhurtable. It's not a victory to, to have a shield around you that, that, and turrets that keep people from coming near your front lawn. That is not... Uh, a way to die laughing uh, at, at everybody and saying, I had the perfect life. You will die uh, with a vague feeling probably of, of deep unease um, and, 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 and sadness. Like, and, it, it, like, it, it, because when my therapist said that, she was like, it's a, it's, it's like, she would be the last person that I would think after everything that she's heard the, 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 like the, to recommend that I continue to do this podcast, uh, she, 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 like I would never have thought. Uh, I would think that she would have been like, "Yeah, that seems like an unhealthy fixation you have on yourself, and maybe now that you're growing, you should retire the microphone and go live in in a in a in like a normal person. It's time." But like, she was like, "You you you need to be honest, and the more honest you are." the stronger you feel and are, and the more you're actually like, the, 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 the more helpful you are. And, and so that's, the, yeah, I, I've answered your question 90 times. It's, it's, that, that's, the, that's the path, it's like maladaptive, yeah. healthy, unhealthy, who knows? I've been up here and being defensive about it. Like I've, I was up here for more episodes than, than not saying like, I hate therapy, I don't believe in therapy. I've been up here saying, don't vote, your vote doesn't matter. Then I've been up here saying like, we should run out of the street and kill Nazis. I, 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 like, like, I, like, who, who, really, who cares, quote unquote, like whether the, the, the behaviors and thoughts are 
healthy, unhealthy, or leading down the yellow brick road or a dirt path that yeah. makes Dorothy a cyborg. However, um, uh, which arguably sounds like a cooler story than <laughs> like one where it turns out you could go home at any time and the bad guy can get be killed with water. Um, but uh, the, the, uh, it, 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 what's important is, is for me, maybe not for other people, mm -hmm. but what's, the, the, for me, it's vital that I gotta be saying what I'm thinking or I'll just, I'll put a gun in my mouth. Like, I, I will, I will, I will, and I, that's and why I'm so... you do have so, a gun. I don't, <laughs> right. That's why I'm so, I've, you know, I've traditionally been Please don't so kill adamant about, you know, every time we mention suicide on the show, and I, you notice I always, like, have this, like, you know, kids, don't talk to somebody, et cetera. Because mm -hmm. I, it's like, before I started this kind of seemingly self-destructive practice of speaking into a microphone about everything that's going on with me, a behavior that has gotten me fired more than it's gotten me hired, a behavior that at times seems like you just wish it would stop because if he would just stop doing it, um, then everything would be fine. Just shut up, Dan. But for me, maybe not for other people, like, it's like th these thoughts, like, in your skull, they just, they bounce off every interior surface, and every time they do, they, they, they accrue thoughts about them, and they, and they, and they, are, they, are, they are just, they just get so big, so fast, and, and then as soon as you, they come out of your mouth, it doesn't matter if people applaud, it doesn't yeah. matter if people boo, it doesn't matter if they ignore it, the important thing that happens is it came out, and now it's gone. I've found that over and over again. Just like, boom. It's just like, 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 like you, I said, uh, I stuck a Sharpie pen up my ass uh, uh, once because I wanted to <laughs> see if it would make me come harder. And, and for the rest of my life, that Sharpie pen has no power over me. <laughs> it doesn't matter if the audience went, you know, yay, let's go buy stock in Sharpie. It doesn't matter if they no say, you're so brave. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's, it's like, what, what matters is that I didn't die. It's kind of like, um, I mean, so I had sex with my third grade teacher to get an A, and I too was homeschooled, so you know, <laughs> it was really... Damn. <laughs> Is that a is that a genuine story from your life? Kind yeah, of. her mom. What, kind of. No, was, yeah. No, I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what what you're talking about? Well, it's your birthday. You're allowed to uh, uh, run through the fields of uh, <laughs> incest. I just want to say something. <laughs> so I just want to say something memorable. <laughs> well, uh, what you're talking about is exactly what like I've been working on in therapy, which is why I was so curious. Is because like something that. My therapist told me recently that was like actually one of those big revelation moments was that like you're not always trying to fix yourself. Sometimes you're just trying to like learn to be okay, you know? Right. And that like I'm all in therapy, at least I'm always trying to be like, so I feel this way about this. And I think like sort of like you were talking about earlier, Nova, I feel this way about this. And I think it's because of this. And I think if I thought about it this way, then right. everything would be fine. But sometimes it's like, no, no, no. It's okay to just think something that's maybe not great you know <laughs> you don't have to accept things to you don't have to like things to accept them yeah and it's mm -hmm. a, there's a thing i've read in these some of these books by this like what's his name i can't remember, fucking seligman or something like that he was like this guy who's like there's a sort of this happiness thing it, it's it's a it's a nuanced distinct this idea of um we'll get we get if um if you're uh if you're worried about going to thanksgiving because you hate uh, you, you, you're uncomfortable uh, talking to your uncle. I'm, I know I'm gonna. This is gonna be an awful metaphor that doesn't land the point. But I'm, here I go. <laughs> but I'm like, 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 like. You're on your way to this. You're invited to a party that makes you nervous for some reason. Let's say you're you're uncomfortable. Um, we think that uh, the day that you realize you don't want to go to the party because your uncle's racist. Um, uh, or that, you know, it's a, we, we, even though that thought doesn't make you happy, we believe, we don't, we don't think that you're following your comfort because it, what, what's comfortable about the thought that your uncle's racist, right? Or, or, or that, or that uh, you're a fuck up that'll just get lost on the way to the party. Or it, it, we say so much, we say negative shit uh, to ourselves that actually, causes a dopamine spike because it causes us to, it gives us a, a little fire escape out of a zone of discomfort. Mm -hmm. 
So pretending that we understand something for the sake of not thinking about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. Like, 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 yeah. No one likes to be uncertain, and yet, like, yeah, it's like, like, actually, uncertainty is a huge invitation to a really, you know, beneficial Burning Man, where like weird ideas can happen mm -hmm. while you have no idea what the fuck you think. But it feels like pain to us. It actually feels criminal to us. And then you go, you know what? Fuck that guy. I'm not going to his party. And even though it creates this 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 negative thing in your life that and you're 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 happy. You like made yourself happy. I thought I saw a hand or something out there, but it's probably just I people going, Jesus Christ, leave. how long is this show? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, probably, it's probably just four people looking at their watches in unison. Um, um, I'm, uh, I'm having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this huh. is a dream come true. <laughs> well, we should be fair. We all Asa was out front uh, handing out his flyers for uh, Asanomics. It's a new religion that uh, everybody gets five dollars and that's his, it. His name's not He's even Asa. It's, it's, of it's, the it stands for assertiveness, uh, spirit, and uh, more assertiveness. <laughs> <laughs> or angle, side angle, you know, any of those acronyms. What were you going to say? No, sorry. For oh, fun and um, profit. I was just going to say what you're saying about honesty and everything. I think, like I said when I was a kid, I, I, I could never not be myself. And I think now I felt pressure to maybe kind of change or to police certain thoughts. Um, and I think maybe that's kind of making me really sick inside, like, lately. And I've always been just a really fully authentic person, regardless of what happens. What, 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 what happens will happen you know, and otherwise you'll just make yourself sick. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, this is going to sound cornball, like I'm like Geraldo and I'm like capitalizing on it. I don't want to get points for it. But, it, it, but I, so I want to stress, like, I can't protect you from anybody. Well, yeah. I can't protect myself from myself or anybody else, but I will, I can guarantee you this, and maybe what's important is that we all guarantee this to each other. Any chance we get is that you can't say anything to me that's going to make me uh, suddenly start to realize you're a bad person. Uh, except lies. Like, like, yeah. like if I find out that you said one thing and then, and then I find out you're capable of dishonesty because that makes you dangerous because, um, but I, I can forgive you if you then later tell me I lied to you about this and that and it, 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 but, but if you, if you tell me the truth, I am never going to punish you for it. I'm never going to like, uh, unless it's an accident, unless you go like, can I tell you something? I put peanut butter on my pussy the other day, and, 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 and I, I might accidentally go, whoa, that's fucking nuts, and, and, and you like burst into tears and go, the word nuts is what they said to me when I'm like, and, and I, like I, that, that, that shit could happen. I could step on your foot while we're dancing, but I am never, no, I'm never going to go, well, you shouldn't be danced with. You don't belong on this dance floor. You should, you know, and that, I, so, like, like if nowhere else other than your therapist's office, you know, please consider this an actual definition, not a political definition of a safe place. <laughs> it's not a, nowhere is safe, uh, but you're you're safe from us up here for sure. Uh, cross the threshold, uh, blurt. Uh, semi-fictional shit that you haven't even explored yet. If you want to, you run the risk of, of people in the Reddit going, <laughs> um, but not Is us. We will, we, will, we, will, we will hold you on our shoulders because we're... <laughs> Because w w what can we accomplish with this podcast if not uh, 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 corrupting a, a, a new generation? Celebrating honesty. <laughs> yeah. um, and I guess that invitation goes for you too, Asa, but I don't, I don't know if I trust you yet. That's, what can I do to earn your trust? Well, I, just, I, I, have, a, I have a suspender thing because I'm like, what, what's wrong with a belt? But then I, it's just like, I, no, you know. suspenders are more convenient. They're okay, more all right, they Asa, just make you feel I'm an like advocate. A jerk. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm kidding. It's, it's, it's probably a bad joke because my whole point is we have to trust each other. Uh, <laughs> I, I trust you, ca 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 Caroline. You what? Yeah. Uh, happy birthday. Thanks. Woo. Unless it turns out to not really be your birthday, I trust you. Oh, it's my birthday. I'm okay. my pastor. Yesterday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. It was yesterday? Birthday. Yeah, it was yesterday. So it's not Eleven really a birthday. It's not, but I wanted to get on stage. Right. This, this, tr this trust thing is getting off to a shit start. <laughs> <laughs> but she told us you it know, was yesterday. Yeah. She wasn't like, no, yeah, it's my birthday. Like, you know, she you know what we like should do yesterday. in the show? I think because, I, I, you know, I was, I, you know like, like sometimes this makes us uncomfortable because we're, 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 the, the show attracts a certain mind that's going to be averse to uh, things that feel like a revival tent because that uh, evokes thoughts of uh, religion and, and dishonesty. 
but it's it's a town meeting this podcast, and uh, we should have a, a, a moment in the show where we go like we used to. Hey, anybody got something so pressing that they really want to talk about it? And, because oh, yeah. what's the, you know, and, and come up and 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 talk, and we'll get to know people. Uh, b- because we used to do that, and then we... I don't, yeah, I, I don't know did. why we stopped. Um, so you know, like, yeah. who's having great pain, who's having a great day, but then sometimes you'd be like, just anybody who really, really has something to say mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, I yeah. think I maybe started to feel like, well, we're not... It's, it's not... It, it's like, oh, is it, are we forming a whack pack like Howard Stern? Are we like... Is it, is it just becoming like a, a, a spectacle of some kind? But that was never the audience's fault. I think that was... I think you just found a lot of the wrong people sometimes <laughs> when you were on tour. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just re- recently re-listened to a bunch of stuff, so I'm kind of like remembering nice. a lot of those moments now and being like, yeah, I think you just got a couple of bad eggs along the way. And I think kinda... in Los Angeles on a Monday night downtown, we could <laughs> probably trust that, yeah. It, it's well, not... it also got to a point where like, and like we, 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 we caught more fish than boots uh, like by casting yeah. that, that net, but like they got to the point where the front couple rows where people were like boxing each other to try to be up there to kind of be like in the show. I think people were expecting to be the next Spencer or Adam Goldberg or whoever, and it, got, it was getting a little frisky for my, for my money. Frisky. That's the dream. Huh? That's, that's the dream for, yeah. like, almost, I think a lot of people that listen to the podcast, that's everyone dream. dreams of being, being Spencer, you know? Do better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Spencer, Spencer, for those people having that dream, tell them one thing you did this week uh, for me that I dream de-glamorizes. About a yacht. What? I dream about having a yacht. Like you could think bigger than no, being but I'm on saying, a fucking tell, podcast. Tell, tell, tell the tell the people dreaming of being the next Spencer one thing that you did this week for me that will disabuse them of their fantasies. Oh, um, hmm. This week? No, well, or recently? Just oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I, I like my job. I All right. Know. Okay. Sorry. I didn't. I th- I, th- I just thought you'd have a fun. I mean, I'd, like you have to do so much specific, like tedious shit. I just. I really like funny. most of that stuff. It's fun. I feel activated and good. Yeah, I like that stuff too. Just like. Oh yeah. Spencer's tests. healthy now. He's he had boring. to oversee the hard the hard installation of uh, of Tesla software onto my car that, yeah, that wasn't was like coming through Wi Fi fast enough for me. Yeah, uh, Spencer, are you self-actualized now? No, no. Okay, I don't know. You, you, I just I follow your Instagram, so I know you've been going through this whole fitness mm-hmm. thing, and it's like, wow, he might be reaching. I've always been healthier than most, even at my unhealthiest. <laughs> nice. Did, did and not arrogant at all. That's you, not you, 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 I'm not going to say show it because I don't want it, that's that's. It doesn't show up. I got like he he I, sent a text saying that I'm comfortable telling friends I, I think I have a six pack. Ooh. <laughs> it's That's not amazing. I can't it doesn't show up on yeah, film. Show it. it doesn't show up on film <laughs> and it doesn't show up except under the right lighting. Oh, and when yeah. those things are no longer this. true and it actually shows up, then I will show it and it'll be soon because the progress I've been making is encouraging. Cliffhanger! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gang. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Caroline. Thank you, Asa. Thank you, Nova. Cheers. Thank also, as always, you. Zach, Chris, Jerk, Nolan, everybody on. here helping us out. Spencer, your game master, everybody. Come to Harmon Quest, harmonquest.com. I'm your comptroller, Jeff Davis. One more time for your mayor, Mr. Dan Harmon. Thank you all. Drive fast, take chances, and if that doesn't work, Tie him up with a rope and put him in a bush. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.